The only way um, to imagine it or to try and picture it if you're not actually there is to imagine two rooms. There's a, light, there's a room which is completely dark and there's a room that has light and a subject in it. And in the wall in between the two rooms there's a lens and a very specific type of lens. And so what I do is I'll, I'll set up the thing or the person in front of the lens in the light room. You put light onto that thing which bounces off the person through the lens and you can see the image on a, on a board inside the dark room which is um, effectively being inside the camera. Uh, I then put up a piece of sensitive photographic sensitive material to where that image is projected and then use a lot of flash to expose the photograph. You know, it's, the work didn't pop out for, you know, from nowhere. It was, it, you know, I, I was experimenting with Ilfochrome, Superchrome material and, and large lenses and lots of light for two or three years before I got anything that was any good. You know, I, I never thought it would be a portrait camera. Uh, I always thought it would just be a still life camera. Um, because the material is very slow in photographic terms. It's, you know, if normal film is 100 ASA, this material is three. The thing that I'm interested in is the way the photographs feel when you stand in front of them, and they feel, they feel a little different to an enlarged image or a, a sort of a digital image in the fact that the viewing distance of the objects changes. You can, you can look at it from 10 feet away, or you can look at it from 10 inches away, and the, the things still remain photographic rather than uh, a mixture of grain or pixels. It's about replicating the way the eye works. When you see a person or look at an object, you don't see it all in perfectly sharp focus if you're you know, a foot away from it. You see a, an area of it which is very detailed, and I think that there's something about uh, working with the physics of cameras and making larger cameras and using the qualities that those cameras have that it, it, it becomes about how people see each other and, and that's to, to me why the detail becomes interesting. Quite often the process that I'm using I make very big decisions early in a day and then it becomes just about tiny refinements you know I want the focus sometimes to be you know, maybe on the edge of the uh, eyelash rather than on the front of the eye. You know, the depth of field is maybe five millimeters, you know, a, a quarter of an inch of real focus. And so it's a decision on where on that sort of part of somebody's eye or wherever you want the thing to be focused. And they're tiny movements and it can go wrong. So quite often you, you're making picture after picture to achieve something that's almost insignificant and no one would really care about except you maybe. I, I'm interested in how it, you know, it feels, you know, people's skin tones aren't peach or, you know, pink or they're, they're green and they're blue and they're, they're purple and they're red. It's made up of all these things because of the veins and the things underneath people's skin. And for me, that's what makes things interesting. That's what makes photographs resonant for me. I'm not conforming to an aesthetic, I'm playing with that aesthetic. A lot of the women that I photograph are, aren't conventionally beautiful, but people read them. People become very attached to the person in their life via a photograph. You know, I have, you know, people have these pictures in their homes and you know, they get talked about like another person because it's a very, it's a big presence in your life. You know? And it's a strange thing to have a person, a, a picture of a person who isn't your family you know, on, on your wall, right? It's sort of strange. So you, you're, you're assigning this other level of intimacy, assigning this sort of acceptance of this other person by having that picture in some way. I think that, you know, the scale is just about uh, being big enough so that when you stand about 14 inches or 15 inches away, you can't see the edges. That's my aim. That's why they are the size that they are because when you know you've got a quite a wide angle of view as a um, you know, human vision and I'm interested in filling that frame. I think I like to invite you as a viewer to be voyeuristic. I think that the making of the things is very everyday really you know but I think that the experience 
that I'm trying to manufacture maybe has a voyeuristic element. Everybody wants to be close to another person. They want to feel like they're not alone. You know, we, we've got our, you know, our lovers and our family and our kids and you want this closeness. And I'm just separating that invisible barrier for a photographic surface, the thing that makes you inevitably, probably alone. You know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a cold, uh, you know, Germanic artist. I, I'm actually genuinely trying to induce a sensation, you know, and we all want to be close, you know, we all want to have this, this sensation of merging, you know. Um, it, it's comforting, right? And I think that I'm trying to mimic as closely as possible that experience, I, I suppose, in, in, in those photographs.